stakeholders in the country. One of the things that I tell people who uh, claim that uh, they are not interested in politics uh, is the specter of some of the things that have been said by the majority leader here, that somebody is holding a bill, a law in his hand that is going to regulate your business. And he starts by saying he doesn't understand that business. This is why I encourage people to look very carefully at the people they send to the Houses of Parliament because at the end of the day, if you have somebody with a lawmaking power who does not understand your business, it is very easy for that person to legislate you out of business. And I am sure that uh, uh, the Senator for Nakuru understands exactly what I'm saying. I have very serious concerns, Mr. Speaker, about the sort of country that we are trying to create here. We are creating essentially a nanny state, a state whereby we are all considered children who need to be looked after every single hour of the day. What we eat is regulated, what you drink is regulated, where, how you sleep, where you sleep, who you go out with, how long you party. I mean, we are becoming too much. We are regulating everything, Mr. Speaker. At the end of the day, there is a reason why there is an age of majority. If I want to go for a looter, Senator Karen Nyamu, I am a grown-up spending my own money. What business do you have as a legislator in my life? Mr. Speaker, this is one of those other legislations. And I want to speak as a person who has won money on numerous occasions on account of Arsenal losing. Mr. Speaker, I have also, I want to confirm that I have placed a bet on this tonight's game against uh, Bayern Munich because I know Arsenal are going to lose. And uh, so as uh, a friend of the uh, members of this house, I encourage you to make a little money today because Arsenal is going to lose again. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Sifuna, there is a point of order from Senator Karen Yam. Close in. Mr. Speaker, I have in this house presented my issue with Aluta. It is about our young people. Is a senator for Nairobi in order to imply that I'm trying to regulate grown-ups from partying whenever they want to? Yeah. And also, uh, in the house, Mr. Speaker, because the comeback that we are about to put up, he will, he will silence him forever. Yes, Senator Sifuna, you cannot uh, bring issues uh, to do with us no, without bringing a substant substantive motion. Substantive motion. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, you want me to bring a substantive motion to discuss Arsenal? Uh, but the, the point that I was making, uh, Mr. Speaker, and this is something that uh, uh, the majority leader alluded to, is that some of these things are personal choices. Although this facility is available for everyone, not everybody engages in gambling. But what we should not do, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I have seen this uh, very worrying trend, where we want to demonize and criminalize everything, uh, so that uh, uh, Shere is being painted as something that is very evil, and somehow that it is targeting young people. Mr. Speaker, we have laws on our books to prevent operators of a club, just like this law that we are debating this afternoon, it has restrictions on the age limits of the people who can participate. There is a restriction on the age of persons who can enter into a club in Nairobi or anywhere else, Mr. Speaker. So that having the rules there should be sufficient for us not to criminalize the activities. We are trying to make sure that the activity is conducted in a manner that is safe, in a manner that does not endanger the lives of people or in, in fact jeopardize uh, the future of young people. Mr. Speaker, I went through the fourth schedule to ascertain that, in fact, this is a function that can properly be undertaken by the national government. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the submissions by the majority leader, I think that is one of the speeches by the majority leader that has earned him applause from our side, because he has reinforced things that we've been saying about legislation that comes before this House. Not least amongst them is the need for leaders, members of parliament and members of the committees to consider bills before part passing them, to read bills before passing them. I was very happy to hear him say that because we've been sounding like madmen, some of us, when we insist that in this house we must consider bills, we must read bills, and debate them, be given sufficient time to debate them. So I'm very happy that uh, the majority leader uh, is echoing those sentiments, Mr. Speaker, so that we can be able 
to uh, uh, debate and consider these bills. I also don't know where uh, some of us get the moral authority, uh, Mr. Speaker, to condemn the young people who have also learned from us that uh, money can be made in easy ways. We have developed a society, Mr. Speaker, that encourages easy money. And we cannot be the ones to condemn people for placing a bet, Mr. Speaker, for trying their luck. So all we need to do as a house is to make sure that the activity is properly regulated. And uh, I was trying to read through this bill and compare it with the existing legislation on, uh, on betting lotteries and, and, and gambling to try and see what the problem or what differences there are. But I wasn't catching too many of those uh, uh, differences, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me start uh, my analysis of the bill with uh, Section 5. One of the problems I've always had with some of the legislation we pass in various sectors, Mr. Speaker, is this requirement of local ownership. It has been argued uh, for and against. I am a strong believer that, Mr. Speaker, you end up uh, unknowingly dissuading people from investing in your own country if you put up restrictions such as this. So if you look at uh, uh, Section 29 of the bill, Mr. Speaker, there is a requirement that for you to be given a license to conduct uh, uh, this gambling business in this country, 30% of your company has to be ceded to a local person. It is very difficult. I remember uh, the discussions during uh, the Energy Committee inquiry into uh, the high cost of electricity. Mr. Speaker, it is not always easy to find somebody who has the same vision as you in business, to find somebody who is willing and ready to put up uh, the resources that are required for you to be able to uh, undertake that business. And Mr. Speaker, for you to find somebody who will not abandon you along the way. I think you have seen in the betting industry, I don't want to mention names, but there are famous uh, companies that started this, uh, especially the online sports betting, that have ended up disintegrating, uh, we have seen, because of the squabbles amongst shareholders, who were basically yoked together uh, against their will because the law requires that you have a certain shareholding uh, that is local. Mr. Speaker, you go to uh, Section 68, uh, 2 of the bill, and this is something that uh, Senator Chariarge was worried about. I can see that uh, it has provided uh, that a person licensed to carry on online gambling activity shall conduct activity under a gambling control system approved by the authority, and that the authority cannot approve a system under that subsection unless you as a licensee provide, amongst other things, at uh, subsection 2G there, responsible advertising. So what he was concerned about is something I think the legislation has already uh, anticipated and provided for. Then, uh, Mr. Speaker, at section 69 of the bill, uh, there is a definition on when the online transaction begins and when it ends. And there is a number of days, a minimum number of days that is provided for, for your payout to be made. So, Mr. Speaker, the concerns by Senator Chararge that you can actually win money and the people or the uh, betting firm refuses to uh, remit that money is something that has also been anticipated in this particular bill and I believe it has also been properly taken care of. Uh, I would want uh, someone to explain to me the rationale uh, of the minimum betting at uh, Section 71, uh, that in fact the minimum bet has been set at 20 shillings, Mr. Speaker, and that is inclusive of uh, a saving component. If you bet 20 shillings, there's an amount of money that is set aside as savings for you. Uh, by, the, by the ministry, I, I guess, or the, by the authority. And Mr. Speaker, that the minimum bet is uh, set at 20 shillings. I, I would want uh, some, some clarification from the committee, I think, uh, during the debate on what uh, that is about. Mr. Speaker, if you go to section uh, 72, subsection 3, you will see what I was telling you about uh, uh, the need for us not to appear as if there are gaps already in legislation uh, when it comes to protecting young people. If you read section 72, subsection 3, you see that an operator is made to require proof of age of majority prior to the registration of every player. So you cannot register 
as a player on an online betting site without having produced proof of your being of age of majority. So, Mr. Speaker, for me, really, uh, other than some of the concerns that have been raised uh, by the majority leader on the uh, adequacy of the fines for some of the penalties that have been prescribed, I believe that generally this is one of the few pieces of legislation that have come for this House that I have minimum uh, problems with, and that, in fact, Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage uh, us not to be in the business of demonizing everything and making everything appear unholy and ungodly, uh, especially when it comes to choices that are being made by grown people. Uh, if indeed uh, the feeling of Parliament is that uh, a person of the age of 18 or, or any other age uh, should probably not be exposed to some of these things, Mr. Speaker, it is very much in order for us to require even a higher age. If you say uh, somebody uh, to participate in gambling has to be above 30 or 40, it is possible for us as a house to do this. But for me, I don't condemn without asking myself, what are the systemic problems that have given root to some of these abuse of the, some of these practices and uh, some people ending up even addicted uh, in, in some of these things? Mr. Speaker, the underlying socioeconomic factors are in fact the things that we as a house and leaders have to, uh, have to address. Somebody who has finished university 10 years ago has never got an opportunity to be employed anywhere. They have degrees, they have all these things. They need to eat, they need a place to sleep. Who are you who has failed to provide that environment where they can uh, sustain themselves and pay for their expenses? Who are you to judge that person when they decide that if I make 50 shillings, I'm going to uh, put 20 shillings on us and on losing this afternoon? Mr. Speaker, it is not right for us as leaders, especially when we have not been able to address the socioeconomic challenges of our young people, to then judge people and say, eh, these people who engage in gambling are, uh, are, are, are evil. Who are you who has never uh, provided any opportunity for people to be employed, to judge a person who has nowhere to go on Monday uh, morning, Mr. Speaker? There is no office for them to go. If they decide to go and listen to reggae the whole day at a looter, who are you? Who are you to judge that person and say, oh, this is something that is evil and should be stopped? I think we need to end the hypocrisy in these things. As leaders, let us address the underlying socioeconomic issues, first of all. Because a person who is meaningfully employed, like I can see a uh, commissioner there, a uh, commissioner's uh, diary, uh, Mr. Speaker, is full from morning to evening, 24, days, uh, 24 hours a day and, and, and seven days a week. 365 days a week, and uh, if, you, if we factor in the difficult travel schedule, uh, Mr. Speaker, she has no time. She has simply no time to engage in some of this. She can't be seen at a looter because she has work to do. So let us focus on the socioeconomic issues, Mr. Speaker, and then we can then uh, talk about all the other issues. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute. Uh, Honorable Senators, uh, as we contribute to this uh, bill, uh, today evening there are so many youth who will be watching uh, the, the, the game between Arsenal and Bayern Munich. Arsenal has uh, the highest fan base. Therefore, you might be addressing people who are even, you know, some of the fans even kill themselves when teams lose. So when the Senate, the afternoon, will be talking about Arsenal losing, then we are talking to the youth out there in a very negative way. So, Senators, appoint giving examples to that much specifically <laughs> because of our youth who are out there waiting for the game in the evening. Senator Joe Nyutu. Okay, I can see you are not trained for this, but you are on top of the list. Senator Oloba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity to support this bill. Mr. Speaker, uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, take note that the Committee of Labor, the Labor Committee, went through this bill and uh, gave a report on it. And Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to interact with some of the, the issues that were highlighted by the stakeholders who are affected by the repealing of the, uh, gambling, the gambling act and now uh, being replaced with this bill. Um, Mr. Speaker, one thing I want to highlight is that 
when we were talking to the stakeholders, of course, uh, and this is uh, the different departments, KRA, we had CRA there, we had uh, Sports Fund, all these people who would be affected directly, all these institutions that would be affected directly by this bill. Mr. Speaker, one thing came out very clearly is that there is a lot of money in gambling. In fact, too much money, Mr. Speaker. To an extent that it was an issue of deciding what percentage of the levy would go to which specific institution, Mr. Speaker. A clear example is um, we had uh, the members of Sports Fund and the CEO come in to say that, in fact, there is a particular section of the new bill that takes away more than 16 billion from the sports fund. Earlier on, the levies would be collected and a big percentage of it would go to sports fund to be able to give, um, facilitate the activities that sports fund uh, has, including uh, sporting activities, supporting artists, supporting the, the, our young athletes, and all that stuff. So while this bill was being drafted, I think there was an oversight and uh, they forgot to include the percentage that should still be, remain in the sports fund. So when sports fund uh, came uh, to the labor committee, they explained this. And Mr. Speaker, one thing that I questioned and I asked them is, yes, this money uh, is generated from sports. This money is generated from gambling mainly within sporting activities. Do they mean to say that in the absence of gambling, the whole sports fund, because 90% of the sports fund uh, budget comes from gambling. So my question then was, if we were to ban gambling in this country, would we also fold the sports fund? And what would that mean then also for the athletes and the sporting activities that are relying heavily on gambling? And, you know, I know it is an issue of the chicken or the egg, you know, but for me, it was imperative to understand that above and beyond relying on uh, gambling uh, money to be able to support uh, uh, sporting activities, we need to think as a country beyond that. We need to start thinking of income generating activities around um, that industry. For instance, look at what... Uh, um, some of our notable runners are doing, opening all these training facilities, uh, these training camps, and uh, turning it into a sports tourism kind of uh, economic activity. And those are the things that I was questioning all the stakeholders, asking them, in the absence of gambling, are you going to fold up those institutions? So as much as we are happy, and I've had Senator Sifuna referencing that we should not regulate, that we are too much on rules, and that, you know, people should be led to be free. No, Mr. Speaker. There is a very, very thin line between an organized society that is responsible for its people and anarchy. So when we are legislating, we are not legislating because we want to get into people's houses to control them. We are legislating because there is a fact here that gambling is destroying our communities. That is a fact. Gambling is actually the source of so many ill activities, the source of so much sorrow in so many households. Women out here are literally having to deal with not only the issue of their spouses having substance abuse, but with the issue of gambling. So as responsible legislators, I want to say that we are not entering the, uh, the private spaces of people to control who and what they believe in, but what we are doing is we want to be responsible leaders to ensure that even within your freedoms, we are still able to safeguard, for instance, our children. And I'm glad that Senator Karen Nyamu has stood up to clarify that her bill and even the motion that we were discussing here uh, on Aluta has nothing to do with adults but it has everything to do with parents, parenting, and ensuring that our children have safe spaces. Because any child who's under, any, any person who's under the age of 18 years, does not have 
the capacity. They think they have the capacity, but they do not have the capacity to make uh, uh, decisions to a certain extent. That is why we always say they have to have guardians, they have to have parents, they have to have someone who is responsible for them. So I think it is completely responsible for us as leaders to say that, listen, if you are earning this and, uh, and you want to spend all of it on gambling, who are we to come in and say yes or no? Yes, it is your freedom, but what we are doing is ensuring that within this space of gambling, there has to be some order in that disorder. Because if you ask me, gambling is a disorder. But okay, there, we all have rights and there's freedoms. So in this disorder, how then can we ensure that we are responsibly safeguarding the lives of citizens, Mr. Speaker? To hear that a Kenyan, a youthful Kenyan, has actually committed suicide because they've lost a, a little bit more than 100,000 on gambling, that in itself should touch the, the minds and the souls of these senator, the senators in this house so that they understand that as much as we are adults, some of us still need to be guided. And that is why within a county, we still elect a governor to be able to lead the people. We still elect a senator to be able to lead the people. Otherwise, we would also say all these people are adults, they can lead themselves. So I strongly believe that this bill is very timely and I believe above and beyond the issue of, of, of organizing the taxes that are being collected on gambling, it is an issue of trying to direct a society back into the moral path that we need to be in. And when I say moral path, I'm not talking about religion, I'm not talking about uh, uh, um, uh, biases, I'm talking about some level of financial management within our homes, Mr. Speaker. There are a lot of women and men who are literally sinking the family unit because of gambling. There are children who are being thrown out of schools because their parents have gambled the last coin. There are women who are literally holding on to their last, last coin because their spouses have gambled everything. On, you're talking about the match tonight between us and Lola Lu. I'm not a football fan. But there are people who would rather say tonight, uh, my family doesn't need to eat meat because this 250 shillings, I want to place a bet. So in all fairness, this has nothing to do with controlling people and the decisions they make with what they want to do. This has everything to do with the, the responsibility of us leaders ensuring that our communities are not washed away with the ills of gambling. Mr. Speaker, we, when we had this conversation with the sports fund, after I questioned them, because it was 16 billion Kenya shillings that they were fighting for to be maintained within the sports fund, you know, 3% of the levies that are collected will go towards the gambling authority. That 3% will cater for the administrative and logistics of running that authority. And then the remaining uh, amount of money, if you go through the, the bill, will be channeled to various places. Among them, the person that gets the lion's share is sports fund, if we actually get uh, that amendment passed. Mr. Speaker, then I asked a question to sports fund. What is your mandate? Their mandate is to cater for sporting activities because it, it is an independent state agency. But above and beyond that, they actually have some level of responsibility to push the creative economy, Mr. Speaker. And there was a kind of uh, discussion like, yes, 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 you know, our athletes, our athletes. I said, you're talking about athletes. What about the creative economy? What about the creative economy? Because you have a mandate within that institution to take care of, of, of uh, singers, of filmmakers, of uh, all these people in the creative economy. And I could tell from even uh, Waziri Ababu Namamba's uh, response that the creative economy was not really prioritized. It was more about football. So, and I remember Senator Crystal Asige being in that meeting saying, it is very unfortunate that the misrepresentation of even the leadership in the various spaces is causing us to forget repeatedly about the creative economy, about our culture, about how we are going to conserve our, our cultural activities. 
Mr. Speaker, one of the amendments that I would like to have pushed within this bill is that, and not, not the bill, but you know, after the bill is passed, we are going to get to a place where uh, regulations of, uh, anchored to the bill will be tabled. One of the regulations that I would really want to see and I'm going to push for is that from that 16 billion plus, 50% of that money should be directed to the creative economy, Mr. Speaker. It is not fair that every day, day in and out, we are talking about football. Even when you're talking about sporting activities, you're still leaning towards one uh, bias, which is football, Mr. Speaker. So for me, I am happy that uh, the committee adopted the um, proposed amendment to ensure that the fund that was going to the uh, sports fund would still be maintained and go to the sports fund. And the next step would be to ensure that the regulations that will be anchored to this bill will push for 50% of the 16 billion to go to the creative economy. And in that sense then, we will be able to have some preservation of our culture through this ill, because again, I call it an ill, this ill that we are choosing to legislate called gambling. Mr. Speaker, there was an issue earlier on about, uh, ab about all these uh, betting companies finding very many creative ways to avoid paying taxes. Uh, the first creative way was that they would say, uh, once we are done with all our gambling for the month, we will sit down, see the money that we have made, see, and then we will report our taxes and pay our taxes. And then an imperative question was asked. If a person is betting, let's say, 50 shillings on a game tonight, why do you, as a betting company, have to wait until the end of the month to pay your 16% or 3% or whatever levy? There was absolutely no reason. And I'm glad that this bill is now addressing that because now you pay your 50 shillings, the, the money that hits the account to the betting authority, the betting uh, uh, company is the money that they need to get, but the taxes go directly to the tax collector. And in that sense, then, uh, we are not having any uh, arguments towards the end of the month talking about you made three billion and you're only paying taxes what, this much. It, it becomes a very... Uh, fair and easy uh, a calculation because truly if the taxman is asking for 3% or 16%, then it is 3% or 16% of the 50 shillings that I am betting. So in essence, that money should not even be stored with that betting company. It should go directly to the tax collector. So that as much as we are now accepting this ill called gambling, we are also saying, okay, our economy can also benefit from the, the, the income that is coming from gambling. Because in that sense then, it makes work very easy for the tax authority. They don't need to have to sit down at the end of the month and follow people and everything. So, uh, and that's one of the other reasons why I'm supporting this bill. And Mr. Speaker, there was an issue of um, the authorities who are going to enforce uh, the activities uh, that are governing this uh, uh, bill. For instance, you have all these um, city council or KRA agents coming in, uh, shutting you down, and then confiscating your machine or your, your equipment. And there was never really any legislation about what happens when you take my machine. And, and who, because that machine sometimes uh, has my personal data as a gambler, as a client. So you find an authority comes in, they sweep the house, they take all the machines, and then you are, you are involved in these negotiations between uh, do I have a license, have I been authorized? In the meantime, that machine that, that has the data of the end user is sitting somewhere very vulnerable to uh, data trading. So when I read some of the proposals that are there and how they would handle issues around uh, confiscation of these machines, and then I thought, yes, we need also that to be, to be organized because sometimes even the machines that are confiscated, the authorities that are with them end up selling those machines and, you know, it becomes a whole other array of uh, a lot of things. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I would like to say uh, that interrogating this bill uh, got me to learn a lot about 
the money that is made in gambling, how the money is handled, and how we can do better. I am also very excited that there will be a percentage, and we'll make sure that it is anchored on uh, the regulation, that there will be a percentage of the money, of the income of the taxes, that will be channeled towards rehabilitation of uh, um, our young people and the addicts of gambling. Because at the end of the day, some level of responsibility has to be taken by these same companies in terms of rehabilitating uh, people who are completely addicted to gambling. So, Mr. Speaker, with those few remarks, I would like to say that I support this bill, and I look forward to seeing the regulations being tabled at uh, my committee, the Committee of Delegated Legislation. Thank you. Uh, next is the Deputy Minority Leader, Senator Wambu Ainok. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity to make a contribution uh, uh, to this bill, the Gabbling Control Bill of 2023, a government bill from the National Assembly. The Speaker, uh, before I go to the contents of the bill, allow me, Mr. Speaker, to say that gabbling has actually become a near menace in this country. Both the young people and adults are losing money in billions uh, to briefcase gabblers and institutions that you can't even trace where they've come from. From the onset, I I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker, that at least there is an attempt to bring order into this really messy industry. Mr. Speaker, I will limit my comments to this bill on three parts, part two, part three, and part four of the bill. And begin by saying that, Mr. Speaker, in many cases, in almost all the cases where we are dealing with shared functions between the national government and the county governments, in most cases, the role of the national government is largely limited to setting standards and policies. Mr. Speaker, we are the hours mandated by the Constitution to defend devolution, to protect the interests of counties and county governments. In this bill, which is the National, National Assembly Bill, I don't see that protection of devolved units in part two of this bill. Why do I say that, Mr. Speaker? I say that because the the licensing of the, the business, the gambling activities, is made a reserve of the national government by this bill. And that the county governments, the only role that they have in receiving money from people who set up gambling houses, they only make their money from uh, issuing permits to business premises. The Speaker, as a house that is responsible for fighting for devolution, one of the biggest conversations that we should be having is how do we open up revenue streams for county governments? This bill does not open that stream. This bill makes a very big river, a revenue stream for the national government through the issuance of licenses to gambling activities and provides a very small stream to county governments through just the issuance of permits for premises. 
The speaker, this is a matter that when it comes to that reading, we should propose amendments. So that is the speaker, this bill, because the bulk of this will be happening in towns, in counties. This is an opportunity for, for counties to issue licenses for businesses, not just permits for the business premises. The speaker, I say this because my view, and I believe that was the view of the drafters of the Constitution 2010, is that progressively, county governments are supposed to collect a lot more money, their own source revenue, and rely less on the exchequer releases from the national government. The speaker, when we get to that reading, as I said, we will be proposing amendments uh, to, to right that wrong. And the speaker, while at it, and I remember that I have made a proposal, a legislative proposal, on the separation of the National Treasury from the Ministry of Finance. The speaker, some of these things will be addressed if we are able to actualize our thinking or now we separate those operations between the National Treasury and the, the Ministry of Finance. And the Speaker, without, without urging members and colleagues to, to go slow on a bill like this, the Speaker, as a leader in this House, at times I wonder, why is it that when we receive legislation, when we receive bills from the National Assembly, we're in so much hurry to process and pass the bills. And yet, when we sent bills to the National Assembly for concurrence, they take forever uh, to process if they ever do. The Speaker, I think a time is coming, and perhaps now is, when we should pay back in the same currency. The Speaker, part three of the bill uh, uh, speaks to the regulatory authority, the gambling regulatory authority. And the speaker, I have my own issues with that section because of basically two things. One, you know, as a speaker, what, what we do uh, normally is that when we, when we legislate, when we create authorities, and I think this is a problem that we have inherited uh, from perhaps a level of, of, of laziness, I don't know on whose part, that every time that we create um, an authority or a board, we, we are very quick to do a copy and paste exercise in, in determining who the members of the board are. And traditionally, we always put in there a permanent secretary, the ministry responsible, a permanent secretary for finance, the attorney general. Mr. Speaker, I think we must expand our thinking beyond that traditional way of doing things. Because you, you will find that on every single day, one PS in one ministry is supposed to be a member of a board in 10, 20 boards. They never get to attend the boards. Of course, they have representatives who are designated but, but the, real, the real impact and contribution of those PSCs in those boards is never felt. The speaker, why can't we move away from that tradition? Why can't we get people who are competent to sit in boards and add value to those boards? 
Now, Speaker, it's the same thing that I have seen with the authorities that we create, the boards that we create. And it is repeated here that the headquarters of the authority will be in Nairobi. The speaker, what is, what is the magic in placing the headquarters of this authority in Nairobi? The speaker, we must begin, we must rise up, we must wake up and realize that that used to happen when Nairobi was the only city in this country. Today, we have, we have Kisumu city, we have Mombasa city, we have Nakuru city. Mr. Speaker, the designation of a town into a city is not just for purposes of name. It is also for purposes of certain activities happening in those cities. Why should we concentrate all the boards, all the authorities in Nairobi and none in other cities like Mombasa, Nakuru, Kisumu, what is the magic, Mr. Speaker, of, of having uh, this, this board in, in Nairobi? And, and I'll, be, I'll be challenging those senators who have fought very hard to have their towns elevated to city status, to also push an agenda to have some of these authorities to go and sit in those cities. Because there's nothing wrong with that, and there's no magic in sitting aboard in, in Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, lastly, is on the issues of licenses and permits. I've looked at part four of, of that bill, which deals with uh, the licensing and the issuance of permits. And the speaker, my question is that as we give authority to the authority uh, to determine who can get a permit and who cannot get a permit, who can get a license and who cannot get a license, that we will not be jumping from the frying pan into the fire itself. That this will not now be another, another, another avenue for serious corruption in this country on the issuance of licenses and permits. I answer because the speaker clause 29 of that bill talks about you know, the, 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 no, single, no individual person can be issued with a license. You must, be, you must have a limited company. You must have an account registered in the name of the limited company. The speaker, in, in, this, in this day and age, and in this country, the easiest thing to do is to register a limited company. It's a very easy thing to do. I can walk up, wake, wake up this morning, and by end of day, I will have registered a limited company. The easiest thing to do in this country is to open a bank account. Banks are now uh, auction, they are, they, they are auctioning um, bank accounts. You know, anybody can open a, a bank account under any name. Mr. Speaker, there is need for proper tightening of part four of this bill to ensure that the procedure for licensing and the issuance of permits for gambling does not open an avenue for, for corruption and extortion uh, for people who would want to set up a genuine and legitimate uh, gambling businesses. The speaker, with those few remarks, I support and wait for that reading to propose amendments. I thank you. Next is uh, uh, Senator Karen Yam. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the Gambling Control Bill of uh, National Assembly. And Mr. Speaker, as much as we will not condemn this practice of gambling, if we do not regulate it, it is bound to become a menace in society, Mr. Speaker. Statistics show that Kenya is among the nations with the highest number of its young population involved in this gambling um, practice, Mr. Speaker. And at, we have 89% of our young people gambling as compared to Nigerian 78% and 74% in South Africa. So Mr. Speaker, this bill is not only very timely, but uh, very well thought out. Um, some of the provisions in this bill 
the requirement that the directors, the shareholders, have to have uh, have to be Kenyan. I want to disagree with uh, Senator Sifuna, who opposes this provision, because, Mr. Speaker, we will have a situation where foreigners come to the country, make their investments, and carry all the profits back to their country. So at least we are assured that if a shareholder, if we have Kenya, Kenyan shareholding, that at least some of that uh, proceeds will remain here. And also, Mr. Speaker, we have an example of KFC in the past where they were importing everything, including potatoes. When we have very industrious farmers in Kenya, and particularly in Nyandarwa, where we have very good quality potatoes. And it was until we protested on social media that now KFC is bound to buy potatoes from Kenya. And you can actually f know, feel the difference from the previous fries in KFC and what we have now. Mr. Speaker, the other provision of 15% tax from the proceeds of gambling is an excellent provision because we are all about creating a revenue for our country. Um, the other provision of requiring that every person, every company carrying out this business has a license and also does not involve itself in very cheap products to protect our children because they can easily afford this uh, low I mean, and cheap products of gambling. Uh, there's also another provision where the, the companies are curtailed from running advertisements during um, prime time when our young people are most active. And also the provision that uh, these companies have the uh, social responsibility to ensure that our young people are protected. So Mr. Speaker, I want to support and also challenge our law enforcement to be patri patriotic and ensure that these laws are being enforced on the ground so that we do not expose 